In the last video, I shared a podcast from Copper Bridge Counseling in Austin, Texas, talking about how grief and loss can escalate hoarding. I also really like two other podcasts on there with energy healer Karen Kay. Everything has energy, and the presence of stuff, the energy of stuff, impacts us. Karen described how every time you look at an unfinished project, it's telling you, I'm not good enough. I'm not disciplined enough. Look, I can't even finish this project. That really hit me. Do I want to walk around all day thinking, I'm a loser? I can't even do this project? The feeling is one of energy being pulled down by unfinished projects. She also talked about looking at things in her home and asking questions like, do I feel bad when I look at this because I'm not using it? They discussed how the process of letting go takes time, one step at a time, one room at a time, one object at a time, one thought pattern at a time. The massive cleanouts on TV are too much at once. I especially loved what Laura Jo said at the end of their first podcast about working towards not just surviving, but thriving. In the second podcast, they talk about how a cluttered home interrupts your flow, peace, and harmony. Your home is your heart where you rejuvenate. It's an extension of yourself. They also talk about how depression slows you down. When people are depressed, they often overcollect for protection. It's like building up armor, and that armor prevents joy from coming in and joy from flowing out. In my conference presentation, I talked about why being in the present moment is so important. Because when we latch on to negative events in the past, that leads to depression. And when we latch on to potentially negative events in the future, that leads to anxiety. They echoed this in describing how objects that remind us of the past, if they're not bringing us joy, it's because that's unresolved loss or grief. Once you can start to release these things by cutting cords to that lifetime, it's also important to have flow in your space, beautiful colors, beautiful artwork, so that you walk into a space that's light and bright and airy, and it uplifts you so you can maintain a high vibration. Open the windows, play some music. Less is always more in your space. The less clutter you have, the easier you can move, the more flow. I also loved a notion they shared about giving and receiving being the same. When you give something away, you release that which no longer serves you from the past, and it opens up your room, it opens up your heart, it opens up your life to receive that which serves you in the present. It opens up the flow for new. When my mother immigrated to the U.S. in the 1960s, she brought with her a lot of gorgeous tailor-made Chinese dresses. My mother was incredibly thin back then, so these dresses are teeny tiny and way too small now. Because I enjoy sewing, I fully appreciate the craftsmanship that went into each and every stitch. Even though my mother had no problem letting them go, I did. The hypnotherapist I've worked with is one of the most incredible human beings I know. She's also probably the thinnest woman I know, and she always dresses nicely. Several months ago, I brought her some of my mom's vintage dresses to try. I didn't see her for a while, but went back last month for a session. My jaw dropped when I saw her wearing one of the dresses. She looked absolutely stunning in it, and it made me so happy. I made sure to hit the record button in my brain to hardwire those positive feelings I received by giving her my mother's dress. I took a picture of her in the dress and sent it to my mom, to which my mom said, can I show this to my friends so they can see how skinny I used to be? 20 minutes into the second podcast, Karen does a quick guided meditation to help cut cords to objects which you're ready to release. Links to both podcasts are below, along with Copper Bridge Counseling's website. Hope you'll have a listen.